Okay? Okay. All right. So let's start back in uh, verse 11 and read with me uh, over to verse 22 as we finish up the chapter. The Word of God says, Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the circumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in the ordinances that he might create in himself, one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and reconcile and, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in, in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself, being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. And so as we look at this, what we're going to focus in on is 19 through 22. And so as Dave talked to us last week about us all being afar off because we are all unrighteous. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. But God, through Jesus Christ, sending his Son, has drawn us near to him by his Spirit. And so that's kind of the, the on-ramp into what he starts off in 19, it says, so then, so without us being drawn near to Christ and being called to him, there is no so then, okay? But now that we are bonded to Christ, we abide in him, he has called us to himself, and if you do not know him as Lord and Savior, you need to. <laughs> first and foremost but <laughs> that, sorry um, but believing in Jesus Christ coming to this earth and living a perfect and sinless life and dying on the cross and being resurrected from the grave and desiring to unite us to him perfectly one day that is this so then okay and so as we go into that, so then, you are no longer strangers and aliens. But you, a foundation other than Christ crucified, it's rubbish. Don't, don't build anything upon it. And so that's the apostles that we have that have laid out this beautiful foundation. And then you think of the prophets. And when we hear the word prophet, usually we go to the Old Testament and think of the Old Testament, the major and minor prophets. But that's not who he's speaking of here. He's speaking of the prophets who, after the apostles, continued to carry on this beautiful message before the New Testament came out and was in the full canon. 
And they carried that on. And as we see over in chapter 4, verse 11, where he starts to talk about different giftings of the body, he starts out with, with apostles and prophets and teachers and preachers, right? And so it goes on down in that with us. And so we are getting this beautiful masterpiece that they have laid but guess what it can't start it can't be laid without the cornerstone and the cornerstone is that strongest point of a building that we must rest in that we must start with because without it you can't even start building and that cornerstone is our savior jesus christ and listen to how it describes him speaking of a cornerstone and how it just everything, the whole structure just kind of comes out of this cornerstone. And it is a beautiful picture. And if you know anything about me, you know I'm a physical, uh, a visual learner. And this just, I mean, it just bleeds out such a beautiful visual picture here. And so... It says, uh, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. And so this cornerstone, the whole structure being joined to this cornerstone and joined to the others. And what I kind of thought of was like, here's the cornerstone in, in, in the corner, and it is bleeding out into the rest of the structure. Because as it grows, growing is adding new believers to the building. And so we build upon each other. But guess what? Whenever there's something added to God's holy temple, it bleeds out of the cornerstone. What a beautiful picture. And so my brother who just comes to Christ has the same blood in him that connects him to me. No matter if I've been in the faith 50 years or I've been in the faith 20 years. It doesn't matter. We're connected to the same cornerstone it doesn't matter of his ethnicity it doesn't matter of his language because we are bound together to the cornerstone which is his holy temple what a beautiful picture and thinking of like we have had a lot of rain have we not Okay, and think of that rain. And that was kind of my visual picture, just kind of it running. But because it was attached to Jesus, of course, it goes to blood. And his blood just going all into the building and just creating his beautiful, holy temple. And then he goes on in, in verse uh, uh, 22, as he finishes up and it says... In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. And the word that really stuck out to me, because we're thinking about this, this temple, right? And that's the visual picture that we've been given. And we're thinking of these stones, and we're referred to as living stones in different parts. And, and so, as you think, Think about this. It talks about dwelling. And there was a commentator that I was reading uh, by Matthew Henry. And he was talking about how there was communion with the believers. Right? And, and when I think of communion, you know, I think of like, you know, all me and Wit went and, and had fellowship together and uh, went and grabbed food. Right, and it was, and it was a one time. You know, I was communing with my brother. We were together. We're part of the same body. Right, but but Matthew Henry broke it down, and he said, "No, there was much communion." And that word "much," it just ate me alive because it's like, no, they didn't leave each other. 
Like I didn't come and spend time with Bobby and then I went on about my business. No, I was linked into Bobby. I was so bonded to Bobby that I continued to have communion and much communion with him day and night. And that is the beautiful thing of unison that we see here. For us to have these decisions that have been made to... Think of the last year going back, and, or a year and a half, adding a whole plurality of elders and just the unison there that was with us and then hiring new staff and the unison that was there with us and then buying and selling land and just the beautiful unison that was there. I mean, what a beautiful picture of us communing with each other and being on the same page. What a beautiful thing. But where I want to push you tonight is this thinking of those smaller, day-to-day, intricate communings that we have. Right? To where when we miss being together, whether it be for a fellowship event, whether it be for a service, it just breaks our heart. But then whenever we're riding through town and we see somebody on the side of the road and we just honk the horn and it just brings us such joy because it's like, there's my brother. And Amber hates a horn, by the way. So she won't be doing that. But, <laughs> but you just that joy of that much communion of what can I do for Chris to bring him joy? When I bust in the door, when I'm in this world and I'm thinking of different things, am I thinking of my brothers and sisters in Christ or am I thinking of myself and what's next for me? And so I want us, as we strive for this unity, as we continue to do this well, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we're doing this bad by any means, but continue to strive on and to consistently commune together and have a love and a hunger to be together and to fellowship and to have God's name be glorified most of all. And so let's, let's meditate on that tonight as we're hearing these prayer requests and we're praying for each other. Are we checking back up on each other during the week? Are we thinking about those different things? There's great events that have happened and people are struggling. And I've heard wonderful things of congregations just, our congregation just wrapping their arms around them and just loving them so well. Whether it's somebody who's facing death or somebody who has a need, you know, and taking up and helping them to pay that need. Just what a beautiful picture, but continue to press on. Continue to strive towards the goal and continue to keep that picture in our minds that we are all joined to that cornerstone. And when we look at each other and don't see Christ in each other, we got problems. We need to continue to extend grace to one another and know that they were bought with a price just like we were. Let me pray for you. Father, we love you. We are so thankful for who you are. We are so thankful for your word. I am so thankful for uh, just the blessing of the unity here at Park Baptist, Lord. And I just pray that you would continue to uh, move us on in that unity. Lord, that we would keep you as our cornerstone, Lord, and we would never sway off of you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.